Thank you.
are joining your escorts. Uh, which is that table? Our escorts are joining us later. You have a reservation. Uh, well, I think they are. I'll see what I can do. We shouldn't have come. I think we'd better leave. We do no such thing. Ladies, pull yourselves together. We came here to save our country. Our husbands would wish it. We want to find Daniel and convince him to go back to Madame Glory. Will you follow me, please, ladies? <laughs>
on the glass began. When we smile on mother pet, men forget where they are going and they follow us instead. When the nights are turning cold and you want a girl to hold, we're delighted to receive you and relieve you of your cold. Eyes that flutter, lips that sway, dresses that are piquante, baby boys and men must play to buy the wells that we display. Where the rain is like we play girls, the money is in cabaret. Let's forget it. How about supper? Oh, wonderful. I'm starved. I haven't eaten a single thing for at least 15 minutes. But no, I can't. Why not? I'm already invited by a friend. Why don't the three of us eat together? Maybe he can pay. I'll go and look for him. been excited like this since my first... Oh. Ah, where is that fool, Niegos? 
I sent him here to find Prince Danilo. Now I am forced to enter this bizarre voluptuousness. This cave of lust. It is terrible. It is. <laughs> How can I tear Danilo away from this temptation that I despise for myself, but which I am beginning to feel? <laughs> And you, Bogdanovich! Oh, just like your excellency. Do you like women, Bogdanovich? Oh, I am beginning to. <laughs> Me too, and tonight I feel especially daring. Oh, your excellency, look at these women. What eyes, what arms, what shoulders. What everything, <laughs> not to mention the rest. <laughs> Excellency, I feel my virtue is wakening. Oh, precious tonight. I have just lost my principles. And amongst these women, these flowers, I feel the soul of a butterfly. Come, gentlemen, let's flap our wings. Monsieur, tonight, Zozo is a man. Senor, tonight, Coco is my Pardon, monsieur. Pardon, monsieur. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, control yourselves. What's this all about? They are children. Nonsense. Well, believe me, my friend, there's not a woman in the world who is worthy of our suffering. You hear? Not one. To suffer for a woman is foolish. Not must to joy, gaiety, change. Last only as long as a flower or a little champagne. Here, here is reality. The one you happen to be with. You, my friend, are too gay to be happy. What is wrong? Nothing. Here, a table. Excuse me, ladies. I must speak to this gentleman. Like, excuse me, ladies. Please, I beg you, my dear. Madame, please. Danilo, I have come here tonight to tell you I finally understand all the anger, hate, fury, exasperation, and even the disgust Madame Glavary demonstrated for you is what we psychologists call love. Love? Ha! How wrong can you be? Do you forget the little incident of the pavilion? Coincidence! Compromising tete -a -tete with Camille. The strategy. A confession. A ruse to make you jealous. She loves you. And you, you are too blind to see. Think of your country. Think of your mission. All it needs is a little move, just one move. I don't love her. I don't love her. Here, these are the women that I love. The women that love me. The women I need. Little boy, open your eyes. Look. On. Oh, ah, madame, what a surprise. Isn't it? I've always wanted to visit Maxime. <laughs> And you too, my darling. A good wife should always follow her husband. <laughs> How can I be alone? Garçon. Madame. Can you get rid of all these people? Impossible, madame. A thousand francs if you do. A thousand francs? Of course. Pierre, Monsieur. Pierre, five hundred francs if you get rid of everybody. Yes, Monsieur. They must be alone. Garçon, Monsieur, two francs fifty if you clear this place. <laughs> yes, Monsieur. Mesdames et Monsieur, the Shah of Persia has just arrived on the terrace. <laughs> I'm very happy. 
lucky that uh, by chance we are left alone. Extraordinary chance. Before the others return, I have something very important to ask of you. Oh? Please go on. First, you must sit down. Madame. And you? Yes. Thank you. Well, go on. To come to the point, it, it's really very simple. I forbid you to marry de Rossillon. You forbid? And who gives you the right? You? Me? <laughs> Why should it make any difference to me? I speak, madame, in the name of the fatherland. Ah. Your money should not go to a foreigner. The fatherland needs... I couldn't give a damn about the fatherland. Oh. So you don't give a damn? I thought you had a heart. And the sufferings of the fatherland don't mean anything to you. You don't care that he's desperate, jealous, unhappy. You don't know what he feels right now in your presence. He's tried to forget you. He's tried to console himself with other women, but, but he can't. He can't. It is still the fatherland you're talking about. Of course. Who else would I be talking about? No one. No one. Oh, poor fatherland. Ah, oh, you don't know. He only thinks about you. Because of you, he doesn't eat. He doesn't sleep. You don't know how he would suffer if you married de Rossillon. But I never dreamed of marrying that gigolo. But the rendezvous in the pavilion. He didn't have a rendezvous with me. It was with another woman. Another woman? She happens to be married. To save her from a terribly compromising situation, I changed places with her. You did that? What? Yes. Why, that's wonderful! Then there's no obstacle between us. None whatsoever. Ah, yes. There is. Fifty million obstacles!
and gentlemen, madam, I have wonderful news for all of you. Madame Glavary will not marry de Rossillon. Oh, that's wonderful! But what about the little incident in the pavilion? You are wrong, sir. If Madame Glavary was in the pavilion, it was because she took the place of another woman. A married woman. Aye, aye, aye. Who is this married woman? I don't know. <laughs> Probably the wife of some old idiot. <laughs> but you're not so old. Uh, it's so hot. Oh, oh, I think I'm fat myself. <laughs> but Daniel, this is the fan I gave you to look after for me. Yes, but I lost it. You lost it in the pavilion? Oh, that fan. What's this? My wife's handwriting! Oh, I am lost! You're divorced! <laughs> divorced! And I am free! Madame, I have the honor in the name of the Fatherland to ask for your hand in marriage. Oh, your proposal's very flattering, Excellency. But you see, you're doing the Fatherland no service. Oh. According to the will of my late husband, um, codicil number five. Yeah, you should take this down. It is laid down that in the event of my marrying again, I should lose the whole of my fortune. Oh! <laughs> is this true? Anna, you would have no money. None at all. None at all. Anna, I love you. I love you. I love you. At last. Have you read what I wrote in it? I don't believe you have. I'm a highly respectable wife. Oh, darling, I never knew. <laughs> Can you ever forgive me? <laughs> but he marries her without her money. Where do we go from here? It's really very simple. You see, I should lose the money because it would immediately become the sole property of my husband. <laughs> <laughs> money, money, money. Is it all you think of? After all, there's only one thing in life that matters.